going to go ahead and give that a wrap. Aloha and welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. This is the premiere episode, is what I said when I first recorded this cocktail about it two years ago now. I thought we would go back and revisit some of our earlier cocktails from the show. Now, this is a cocktail that was made famous by Ernest Beaumont Gant in Hollywood, California. Don the Beachcomber was his uh, pseudonym, if you will. After becoming famous for his rum rhapsodies, he ended up having a chain of restaurants and bars across the country. Quite the luminary in the world of cocktaildom. But this cocktail is a very 1940s cocktail. You gotta wait till the end to find out what kind of glass it goes in. It's a special, well, it's right there, but it's a special glass specifically for this drink. And so for this cocktail, we'll be using limes, simple syrup, Angostura bitters, Pernod, and the infamous 151 Demerara rum. This is a fairly simple cocktail, but it all comes down to technique. So let's get started with cutting a lime in half. We're gonna squeeze half an ounce of lime juice into a measuring guy here. And we're gonna pour it directly into this swizzle cup. Now a swizzle cup is like a sleeker julep cup. We're gonna pour that right into here. And then just half an ounce of simple syrup as well, right into the swizzle cup. We're gonna do six drops of Pernod. And when I say drops, I mean make sure they're drops. This stuff can radically alter a cocktail with just the addition of couple more or a couple fewer drops. And now the booze. If you're looking for a good 151 Demerara, talk to our buddy Ed Hamilton because this is this is the stuff. It's it's rich with Demerara flavoring, but it also has that overproof quality to it that we need in the 151 Swizzle. Did I mention we're making the 151 Swizzle? We are. And while most cocktails call for two ounces, this one calls for one and a half ounces. Don't worry, you're not gonna miss the lack of alcohol in this drink and into the cup. Okay, we're gonna save the Angostura bitters for the very end. Till then, what we're gonna do is if you have a swizzle stick, did I didn't know about swizzle sticks two years ago. This is actually part of a tree. It's a swizzler tree. I don't know what it's called. Our buddy Ed Hamilton of Hamilton Rums donated the stick to the show. I'm very grateful for this stick. But what you're gonna do when you, when you make this cocktail, either use a swizzle stick or use a long handle bar spoon. You're gonna put that down in here first. If you don't have a bar spoon or a swizzle stick like Ed Hamilton didn't give you one, you can use a top down mixer. Just for about six seconds, six to eight seconds, and uh, you'll get a similar result. So put the swizzle stick down in first. Add some pebble ice. And you're gonna fill this maybe like an inch from the top kind of lift it up, move it around a little, and then just get the swizzling. I'm just going back and forth. I'm going up, I'm going down. That is a good time. So the idea is that you wanna get this thing going quick enough that you're mixing, adding air, and also the outside of this cup should start getting, the outside of this cup should start getting frosty. But you can see the bottom of the cup is sized perfectly to handle the swizzle stick. Okay, when you find that there is like a frost forming on the outside of your cup, you can go ahead and pull your swizzle stick out. We're gonna put this thing aside. We're gonna add some more ice on top of that. With tiki cocktails, you really wanna have an abundance of ice. It's not gonna hurt it to have more ice. Okay, now the ice really matters with this kind of cocktail. You really wanna have some fine ice Pebble ice almost seems like it's almost like a little too much. You almost want finer than that. So there's quite the controversy about whether or not you should be making snow cones on the top of your cocktails. Uh, I say I'm all for it. Here's the thought. The Angostura bitters can be mixed down into the cocktail, but I really want to tint the color up here. I just think it looks really good. Eventually it'll sink down inside. A couple of dashes there and you really get like this heavy kind of clove scent to it. It's just a delight. Also, a little bit of cinnamon on top. A couple spins of the nutmeg grinder. If you get this cocktail in a fancy place, they're probably gonna do this, where they wrap it up because it's cold on the hands. This is a vintage little napkin guy. 
And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and tie that around it. Be careful that you don't knock it over because it tends to be kind of unwieldy. And then once you tie it, you can just slide it up and it's self-tightening. And we're gonna further garnish it with a cinnamon stick right there in the back. If you can find a spot for, there it goes, right there. And so, from the 1940s at Don the Beachcomber, this is the 151 Swizzle. Now before I taste this beautiful cocktail, if you're interested in helping to support the show, the Breezeway Cocktail Hour, you can join us on Patreon. I will send you this pin and you'll get opportunities to buy merch before it goes on sale to everybody else. And we have all kinds of stuff coming up. Tiki mugs, more t-shirts, and specifically for Patreon members only, the Breezeway Cocktail Club. The Breezeway Cocktail Club will only be open to Patreon members. For a small fee, you get to come here, enjoy cocktails, and a show the breezeway. Yeah, should be pretty rad. Now let's jump into this cocktail. Cheers. That is a sharp, aggressive, spirit forward, uh, God, how do you describe that? If you like overproof rum, you will enjoy this cocktail. If you like presentations, you might also enjoy this cocktail. If you don't want to taste rum in your cocktails, find something else to drink. This is a cinnamony, wait, is it cinnamon? You really get a sense of the Pernod. What else is in there? God, it's just the rum, right? It's rum and lime and some simple syrup. It is definitely a cocktail that if you drink a bunch of these, eventually you'll go, yeah, I love that drink. But I don't know if most people would get that far as to have a million of these things to get to the point where they're like, yeah, it's my favorite drink. Is this your favorite drink? Let me know in the comments below. Is this your favorite drink? It's not mine, but it's also not, not my favorite drink. I do have to say that one of my favorite things about drinking this drink is that when you bring it up to your nose, you really get that nutmeg and that cinnamon, of course from the cinnamon stick as well, but it really helps the rest of the flavor of the drink. I don't know if this is the worst drink in the world. I would say that this cocktail is for the mature cocktail enthusiast. Look, it, it even has like a little suit on for you. Like a fancy little, like a fancy little lad there dressed up just for you. You wanna taste it now? Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Larissa. See? It's not bad. It's not bad? Yeah. I but it's. Order it again. <laughs> she wouldn't order it again. Once you get into this cocktail, you find the complexities and the simplicity. It's better than you think. I think. If I was served this in a bar, would I order this again? No. But I appreciate the presentation. I appreciate that this was one of Don the Beachcomber's first cocktails. It is always worth getting this this drink, just like for the presentation. And well, get off there. It's a good looking drink. I will tell you one thing, that will certainly get you where you're looking to go real quick. Folks, if you enjoyed this, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and we'll see you in more cocktail episodes for the rest of the year. We're gonna revisit some other stuff that we've already done in the past. I hope you'll be along for the ride. Hit the subscribe button, aloha. He had a chain of restaurants a car. He had a train. Oh, fuck. Angostura bitters. I see the flippy shit I'm doing? Uh huh. That's how you get views. I look so good tonight that I should be doing that. And you're gonna. Feed it. Can you get that? I have a new microphone. You'd think that after two years of making these kind of videos, you wouldn't just like knock over a cocktail all over the bar. But whatever, it's my bar. I can knock over cocktails if I want. In this episode, I'm gonna make a cocktail that you will either love or be furious at me about. Now before I taste this beautiful creation, I wanna tell you if you were, 
Now before I, now before I taste this incredible uh, before I taste this incredible uh, God. Now before I taste this beautiful cocktail, I wanna tell you if you, um, now this is a cocktail made famous by Don the Beachcomber in 1942. Don't know if it's actually 1942. And you will, son of a bitch. Also, Doug Donaldson, happy birthday, dude. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you're making one of these right now. Let me know what you think. But I'm also making this review after I finish the whole thing and I've come back to turn the camera back on because I was like, this drink got a bad rap from me. But it's not for the faint of heart.